Hey, 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 you guys. I've been wanting the adult Happy Meal for so long. I think it's the adult Happy Meal. It's not shown as adult Happy Meal. It's shown as like a different kind of Happy Meal. Ooh, we got fries. Oh my God. Oh my God. Yep. McDonald's has the best fries, hands down. Um, we got a toy and 10 piece chicken nuggets. And I couldn't resist. I also got a quarter pounder with cheese. I don't know, cause normally I always get three items. Like I never just get fries and nuggets. Mm. and a sweet tea this is my first time having mcdonald's sweet tea and i really like it uh, i meant to get honey i must have just gotten honey mustard but sweet and sour is my fave i also really wanted to talk to you guys about my europe trip just like stories and stuff um because i like just disappeared for two weeks and that was that so i have like a lot of fun stories i want to tell you guys i do apologize if i get off topic i have such bad adhd and i'm so bad at storytelling so if i go off on a tangent just know i'm aware of <laughs> my issues yeah i'm probably not even gonna get in everything that i want to tell you guys about my trip um just because I get so distracted. Um, okay, first and foremost, let's open the, yeah, see, the cactus plant flea market. That's what they call the meal. Aye, aye, look at this guy. Oh, I love him, I said. Hey, we kind of look alike. Honestly, that used to be my favorite part about Happy Meals. I mean, that's the only reason I wanted to get Happy Meals because they never really, like, I didn't really like the small fries. Like, they were always too small for me. <laughs> <laughs> but I loved collecting the toys. My favorite is when they had like the Neopets. Do you guys remember those? Oh my God. Polly Pockets. Did they ever have that? They used to have really cool toys. I kind of want to take a bite from the quarter pounder first. Mm-hmm. Oh my God. That is simply delectable. Okay. So, I went to Italy with my friend Alex and his sister Madeline. And Madeline left after like six days and then Alex and I stayed together. But Alex is kind of like a nomad. Like, he has been traveling around Europe for like months at this point. He wants to stay there indefinitely. So I was like, I want to come. <laughs> so we decided to go to Positano, one of the prettiest places I've ever been. Um, we used it as a base to go to places like Sorrento, Pompeii, Capri. Um, I would say it was a good base, but if you're thinking of saving money, make your base somewhere else in the Amalfi Coast, like Sorrento. Also, the buses only run until a certain time. So like, if we were eating dinner in Sorrento, um, the last bus was normally always at like 9.30. Um, it's like 100 euros to get back to Positano by taxi. Me and my friends, we were like, should we go to dinner here? Like, will we have enough time to catch the bus? So keep that in mind, but funny story about that. One of the days we decided to go on a hike, not the hike of the gods. Um, it was another one because we kept doing this thing where we would stay up like all night and then we'd get up late, but then we would be like, oh, it's too late to like do a lot, <laughs> but 
we were living it up at nighttime. But yeah, so one of the days we decided to go on this other hike, like near our Airbnb. Um, we met these guys on our hike and they both had identical tattoos. So we were like, okay, either they're like dating <laughs> or they're related or they're just friends with like the same exact tattoo in the same exact spot. That becomes important for later on in the story. So we said hi, bye to them. We get to the top of the hike and we were walking by this church and at this point it's like six, ew, an ant. Is that weird? Whatever. I don't know where this ant came out from, but I'm gonna continue eating this. Like, I don't give a fuck if it came out of my quarter pounder. <laughs> I'm still gonna eat it. Sorry, ant. That was a big one too. There's probably ants in this quarter pounder. Like they probably make this quarter pounder with ant. <laughs> I'm like looking for ants. <laughs> Um, no. Honestly, maybe it was me. Maybe it wasn't even the meal. Maybe I'm like dirty and buggy. Anyway. So. <laughs> it's like six o'clock. This bus driver comes over to us being like, Oh, where are you going? Get in, get in. I take you to your destination. So, so, so we're like, okay. So <laughs> we're in this bus going to who knows where <laughs> we keep trying to go up to the bus driver being like where are we going and he's like uh sit down sit down i take you i take you and we're like we know but like where is this going <laughs> so i looked in my lonely planet southern italy book and looked up how to say it. weirdly enough in the book there's not a lot of translations to where is this bus going, I'm assuming because people probably already know where they're going before they get into a bu random bus, but I was like, si ferma a Sorrento, meaning does this bus stop at Sorrento? And he's like, no, no, no. So I was like, oh shit, I don't know how to say where is this going, so I was like, where like is this going he's like ah oh, sit down sit down <laughs> he was so cute i loved him but we were also like wait please where are we going so we end up at this random location um and it ends up being so fine we end up just taking the bus into or the train into sorrento and we spent a night in sorrento so it was like a fun little surprise but We ate dinner and we realized that we had missed the last bus to Positano from Sorrento. So we're like, oh, what do we do now? Like, are we going to have to pay for a taxi? And then lo and behold, we see the two guys from our hike earlier. So we're like, oh, We should all hang out. So we go get a drink and we're hanging out. And then we're like, we don't know what to do. Like, we don't know how to get back because we missed the bus. And they're like, you could sleep outside like of our hotel building. Cause there was like, their hotel was right near the dock. So we were like, okay. Like, <laughs> like that sounds like fun. So we decided to do that. Um, we just slept outside the whole night. And honestly, it was a lot of fun until like 5 a.m. when it started to get really cold and like the grass was damp. And for the longest time, there were these two sailors watching us because we were like dancing in the grass. 
and the two sailors were like waving their phone then we took the bus back at 6 a.m <laughs> and we slept until like 2 p.m and we were supposed to go to pompeii that day and we're like not again <laughs> and it was funny because the day before we were like okay tonight we're going to bed super early so we can go to pompeii early in the morning nope <laughs> it didn't work out that and that was the second day that we had done that like stayed up all night the first night we went to the only club in Positano. The one club that they have, I will say, is so much fun. It's called Music on the Rocks. On the second night we went to Music on the Rocks, we skinny dipped in the ocean. I'll always remember that. That was such a special moment. Oh my god, it was so beautiful just like night swimming in Positano. Ah. Oh, by the way, we did find out that those two guys that we met on our hike, they were brothers. I straight up asked, cause I, look at, I looked at them longer and I was like, you guys kind of look like, are you brothers? They're like, yes. I was like, I was a little confused at like your identical tattoo like on your chest and they're like yeah we're brothers i think it's funny because i ate so much pasta while i was there i ate pasta every day while i was there but something that i love about i think honestly europe in general i don't know if it's just italy or not but the waiters there are just so fun they'll talk to you they'll have full-on conversations um like one of our waiters sat down it it was just honestly such a good time i was always just so invested in all the conversations we were having that i didn't film any of my pastas which is funny because everyone on tiktok was like she didn't even eat pasta she wasted her time in italy all she ate was were sandwiches but i don't know Sometimes when, on vac when I'm on vacation, especially with friends, I don't really, I'm just enjoying myself in the moment and I don't want to film anything that won't seem authentic or like if I want to relax and eat my food with my friends and talk, I'll do that, you know? And for some reason that always ended up happening while I was eating pasta, but I think the best pasta I had was the carbonara at this place called bruno in positano oh my god it was so good um oh also you guys this is very important because everyone's like where's the cacio e pepe in italy cacio e pepe is more of like a roman dish and apparently it's not really served in the summertime like apparently it's more of a wintry dish because it was not on a lot of the menus at all. I, it, I don't think it was on any of the menus. No, it wasn't. So I tried, I tried to get some authentic cacio e pepe. I do want to explore more of Italy. Like after Positano, we spent six days there. Speaking of ants, honestly, I'm so desensitized because our Airbnb it was like 1700 for like six days and it was split between three people, but there was like an ant problem and it was really stressful because they would disappear and then you would just find them somewhere else. So I was like, oh my God, I hope that they don't get into like my bags and stuff. Um, but one night it was really cool because they were in the bathroom. It was just like this like group of ants that just like toured around our airbnb um but one night i saw the queen and it was kind of badass like she was she, it kind of looked like the ant that i just found on this cutting board like she was big and she knew that she was in charge you know she was the queen i mean she was the queen so 
yeah i was really stressed about the ant problem and it's like if you're gonna be paying that much for an airbnb and there's ants maybe staying at i don't like i wouldn't do anything differently because i loved our airbnb and i loved being in positano and honestly all of our butts got so big because of all the steps that's another thing i feel like you can't be out of shape and go to a place like positano i work out like almost every day and there were times i was like <sighs> honestly alex and madeline amazing people to go on vacation with. Like, I think I found the people that I want to travel the world with. They're just so easygoing and like, me and Alex are super similar and Madeline is like a planner, but she's also like chill. So it's the perfect amount of, I don't know, it's just such a good group. Much better than when I went to Europe by myself. I don't know. I think that a lot of people say they love traveling by themselves and that's great, but I did find myself getting a little lonely when I traveled by myself in 2018 and I was never lonely on this trip. So I'm also an extrovert. So there's that. Um, I'm really about dipping the fries in the sweet and sour, but yeah, after Positano, Oh, well, where else did we go? So from Positano, we went, we ended up going to Pompeii. Something I'll say is Pompeii, something I'll say. If you're going to take any of the public transportation, just make sure you give yourself a lot of time. Because before we went to Pompeii, we gave ourselves like three hours. And at one point we were just sitting on the bus, the like subway for like an hour, not moving. We ended up missing our tour. We got another one, but we ended up missing it because of the bus. So just give yourself the maximum amount of time. Like clearly three hours wasn't enough, <laughs> but we ended up going to Pompeii and oh my God, that place is so cool. Like I know a lot of people are, there are some people that I know that weren't that impressed by it like i think they thought that they were going to see like bodies coming out of the ground but i feel like if you go in with that expectation you're not gonna like it like it is ruins you know it's not like you're going to see it right when it was left it's like they're pompeii ruins you know what i mean like i think that the fact that those things are there to begin with still is just insane. I felt like I was walking, I felt like I was in Attack on Titan just walking through the city. Like, and just learning about everything. Our tour guide was so into it and no one was asking her questions. So me, Madeline, and Alex were like asking all these questions and she loved us. I don't know what happened to me in Italy, but I became obsessed with Mount Vesuvius. Like. I just got such an eerie feeling like the fact that Mount Vesuvius was like right behind the ruins. It just looked so mammoth and like so badass. I wanted to climb it, but we didn't have enough time. Next time I definitely will. Um, we also went to Capri, which was just beautiful, gorgeous. So we ended up going to a lot of places. Um, oh, this is funny. So Madeline left after like six days and Alex and I were gonna stay in Italy. So we're like, where should we go? So the night before we met this guy at the nightclub and his name was Pierre Luigi. And he was like, I'll drive you guys to Bari. Me and Alex were like, okay. So this guy drove us to Bari. Alex and I stayed one night there in like an Airbnb. And Bari felt like, it felt like the Manhattan of Italy. Like very local. Pierre Luigi was like, just telling you everybody wears black in 
in Bari, like everybody wears black. Me and Alex went to dinner. I was wearing pink. I was wearing pink and black and then blue. And then Alex was wearing like white and black and everyone was staring at us. We just like, we stuck out like sore thumbs and Alex and I are people that are like, hey, like, what are we doing? Where are we going? Like in America, people are like, hey, yeah, but. <clears throat> so Alex and I just like people watched that whole night while we were there. Um, which was just as fun. I love people watching, especially in different countries. The next day, we went to Lecce. At first I was like, is it Milkland? <laughs> but no, it's honestly more of like a historical city. And the like Puglia, is that how you say it? And the Puglia region. You have Lecce, um, Gallipoli, and Toronto, Albero Bello, which people say is beautiful. So Alex and I stayed in Lecce in this hostel, which the Lobby Collective Hostel, best hostel I've ever stayed in. Granted, it's the only it's only the second one I stayed in, but so good. I think it was like the second night we stayed there. We met like a bunch of guys and they were like, okay, let's cook dinner for the hostel. When we all got back from grocery shopping, they were like, okay, we're gonna shower. You and Alex start the food. And we're like, we don't know what to do. And as you guys know, I'm a horrible cook. So our friend Raul, who's Italian, he's like, I'll make the carbonara. Just like start prepping things. So me, I thought I was being so helpful. I decided to boil the water. And the water started boiling, so I put the pasta in, and then I like chopped the onions and stuff. And Raul's like, what are you doing? Who boiled the water and put the pasta in? And I was like, that was me. He definitely wasn't used to somebody like me. He's like, why would you do that? It takes pasta five seconds to cook. Aren't you Italian? Don't you know this? I was like, <laughs> We met the most amazing people in Lecce, in that hostel. They became like, honestly, I think that they're gonna be lifetime friends. We went to the beach. It was really cool. And we like bonded because the first day we were in Lecce, it rained and it poured. Um, So we just were stuck inside this little like pizza place and we just spoke, drank, got to know each other. It was, I really enjoyed meeting them. It made my heart so full and I was so close to just quitting my job and staying there with Alex forever. But I'm glad I didn't. Like I have a nephew, I have things. I have things in America, you know? But when you meet so many people, especially in a hostile environment that just love to travel it like it inspires you i feel like i don't travel out of the u.s nearly enough and also another thing that i noticed was i was like the only one that only spoke one language like everyone i met at least at least spoke to somebody was like what languages do you speak i was like English? I hate myself. <laughs> I can like understand Spanish a little bit, but not well. And so I'm trying to learn Italian. Okay, this was so needed. I was going to eat fast food in Italy, but I was too busy eating like not fast food items but i wish i did because apparently like the mcdonald's is just better there honestly the food in europe is so much better i'm somebody that i get lactose intolerant in america like if i eat a lot of ice cream or drink a lot of milk oh things will happen to me okay i didn't have any kind of oat milk i only drank cappuccinos with whole milk and guess what nothing happened to me like, I just think that things are fresher there, even the whole milk, like, because I, 
came back to America and was like, oh, look, I can like have all this whole milk now. So I got a medium cappuccino with whole milk and my stomach started hurting, but maybe it's because I got a medium. So that was like too much whole milk because the cappuccinos I would get in Italy would be small. Um, that's another thing about America. They always want to make everything so big and super sized. I bet, I bet the sweet tea in Europe, if they have it, is not this size. Um, um, I also was really bad at vlogging when I was there because I was like, I'm gonna vlog my whole trip. There's like little parts that I did vlog. It's probably gonna end up being like a three minute video. But if you guys wanna see it, let me know. Love you guys.